to continue this conversation right now on the best and worst moments of last night. Back with us this morning, we're thrilled to have him, political strategist and pollster Frank Luntz is here. And uh, we're about to walk through several moments from last night. But, uh, Frank, but let's talk about this moment uh, that we just saw and its significance. I got one word for it. Boom. I feel like Kramer now. She owned it. She owned the stage. And Joe Biden should have known it was coming. He was criticized earlier because he'd said 32 years ago, let's pass the torch. You know what attacks are going to happen. You're supposed to be prepared for it. And I got to tell you, don't just focus on the national numbers. What really matters is Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina. South Carolina is 40 percent African-American in the Democratic primary. She has now staked a clear claim to that vote. A number of them have been supporting Biden up to this point. And you think we're going to look at the numbers in a week from now and it's, and it's going to be markedly different as a function of that moment? In the states that matter? Absolutely. Now, again, we are misleading people. The media misleads people when they only focus on the national data. You have to focus on the states that matter. Okay. I want to show you another moment uh, from Kamala Harris last night. Senator Harris, so, so, for third, Marion, Senator Harris, for third, please, 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 we will let you all speak. Senator Harris. You can't afford to wait for evolution on these issues. Okay. Okay. Hey, guys, you know what? America does not want to witness a food fight. They want to know how we're going to put food on their table. Yes. Was she the winner of last night? Absolutely. She's the winner of, of both nights. That was a, a brilliant debate performance. And you're going to be rehearsed. You're going to know that there's going to be this uh, a little bit of chaos between the questions. Why was she the only one who was prepared with a great response? Her media consultant, Jim Margolis, smart guy. She's got a great team behind her. That showed the experience of someone who's been in the Senate a lot longer than, than she has probably been. probably hope that she's a former prosecutor. Uh, she's prepared for this. Now, everyone's going to be focusing on her. They're going to focus on where she stands on the issues. They're going to make her clarify some of the positions, which she has not done up to this point. But that is a brilliant debate performance. Okay. Is, is she, uh, can she take the mantle of electability from, from Biden? I mean, that, that in the general, do you think she could be as competitive as Joe Biden? Because that, that, I mean, when I Great. try to figure out what Biden has, that is his, his chief asset. And I think he still has that uh, because Hollywood... They'd go with the, the flavor of the month. They would love to not have to back Biden, but they are. And that's totally about defeating Trump. So I'm getting texts all through the debate. She looks too angry. She looks too mean. And I'm thinking to myself, they don't understand Democratic primary voters. They want to take it to the president. They want to be tough as nails. But in the general, can she compete as well as Biden? I'm not going to answer that because too that's, early. that's not what this is about. And we have to stay focused on an electorate that many of your viewers don't know anything about. They don't hang out with working class voters. They don't interact with working class voters as much as the upper middle class. So, so Biden's it's... entire message of trying to be somebody who can work and reach across the aisle is very different from what many of the younger candidates are saying, right. which is this is about resistance fight. And you think that's what's going to make it through in the Democratic process? I think in the end it's the resistance and fight voters that beat the conciliatory voters. Okay, I want to show you something in particular on Joe Biden, because this is interesting, especially for our audience. Uh, Biden was asked about some remarks that he made recently to a group of wealthy donors right here in New York City, in which he said that we shouldn't, quote, demonize the rich. Here's what he said on the debate stage, though, about addressing income inequality. Look, Donald Trump thinks Wall Street built America. Ordinary middle class Americans build America. Donald Trump has put us in a horrible situation. We do have enormous income inequality. And the one thing I agree on is we can make massive cuts in the $1.6 trillion in tax loopholes out there. And I would be going about eliminating Donald Trump's tax cuts for the wealthy. What so, was the answer? So it's a war in success. And Joe Biden is one of the generals in that war. There is going. Well, we, how did, we, you heard what he said. No, and he, that he did not address what he said to those rich donors, and they didn't follow right. up. In, in they one didn't instance, say, yeah, but he, that's he, not he, what matters. What matters is what he said well, here. He and had what, that answer ready to go. And, and what he said, well, okay. But he he's, didn't answer. What about rehearsed. you saying that it's not, nothing's going to change for you rich people? That's what he said. So he sort of gave them sort of a... Yes, uh, the, and that the, the, surprises the okay. you. And that surprises you that they I just say think one it, thing I think the audience. moderators could have said, Joe, you just... What about what Joe, you said? Joe, as you would say, people? what happens in Casablanca, right? You're shocked, shocked about what happens in Casablanca. I mean, this is what... This is the way... There uh, is going to why be... Watch? There is going to be a, a class war brewing in this country 
between the haves and haves nots. I hear it in my focus groups. I see it in my polling. This is real. And the Democratic debates are going to bring that about. The question you have to answer is, what are you going to do to try to bring the country together? And none of these candidates are doing that. Okay, let me show you one last candidate, Bernie Sanders, right now, attacking Wall Street last night. Let's take a look at one more moment from that second debate. We the issue is, who has the guts comment, to comment. take on Wall Street, to take on the fossil fuel industry, to take on the big money interests who have unbelievable influence over the economic and political life of this country? These issues that have is better. Issue. Okay, so if, if, if Harris was the winner, where does Bernie come out? Where do you put Biden if you're going to rank it? Well, I'm putting Biden at the bottom. Bottom at the Biden? At, uh, bottom, Biden bottom, bottom at the Biden, yes. Yeah. Biden at the bottom. Out of uh, all ten of them? No, I mean, just a, yeah, there are several up there who, who either got lost or you wonder what they're doing on the stage. I, I swear that some of them... When does Hollywood switch to, to we, Kamala and when does CNN... CNN already made the switch last night. We had... Kamala. We had two candidates from Colorado, and I'm convinced that several others were smoking something last night based on their responses. <laughs> uh, the challenge for Biden right now is how quickly does he stop the bleeding? The challenge for Kamala, I want to know where Senator I Harris don't think is are, today. I don't think is she in Iowa? Is okay. she in New Hampshire? Rob Reiner is not a committed Biden person. He's oh, ready to but switch where, in a second. Where's San, but so, so where's Bernie Sanders now? So Sanders is no better and no worse than he was before. Elizabeth the Warren? She is up from where she was. Buttigieg is up from where he was, and Joe Biden is down. Joe Biden is bleeding today. Will we see badly. Joe Biden fall, le fall legitimately in the polls? You'll see him fall, but he's still going to be number one when I see you in a month. Okay, Frank, it's great to see you. Thank you for coming in.